I've been surrounded by people smarter than me my entire life, especially in academia, but very few have made me feel as incompetent, as insecure as these three people. These are, in my opinion, the top three build makers in PoE. And while technically this build list is subjective, I'm not even sure there's that much debate when it comes to trying to make some sort of objective list, even if you change up the measures. When you think about the diversity of builds, the efficiency, and just their general resume, I think these three really come out on top. In no particular order, here we go. So firstly, Rutu is probably the most polarizing figure in the whole community, obviously responsible for a lot of the drama, but is widely also regarded as one of, if not the brightest mind as far as builds go in Path of Exile. He's really, really creative, especially on the softcore trade side of things, and really opts more for like lower budget type things because when it comes to crafting RNG, he seems to not really be able to roll the dice well. So if you really like high creativity, low investment builds that really focus on creating and leveraging new interactions, or you know, just care deeply for rabid animals, I think this is the kind of build creator you'd really want to go to. One of the crazy things in PoE is that a lot of people tend to underestimate how hard it is to actually find brand new novel interactions, or even put existing tools that have already existed together to make a new build. So recently, Rue has been experimenting with a cast on crit DD League starter, which is a pretty crazy concept to even try to go for. He also pioneered Vortex Ignite. He had some really crazy tech recently with infinite curse duration for like full screen prolif for simulacrums with Ignites. EK Poison was one of the more efficient one button League stars that we've seen. And probably the strongest thing he's done recently is leveraging Poison on conversion skills and ignoring the conversion part of things. For example, Poison Stormbird which ended up being one of the most pound for pound strongest DPS builds you can actually create. It's a little bit more annoying to get access to his builds than a lot of people, um, but they can tend to be found on a spreadsheet on a Switch. I know there's at least one channel on YouTube that tries to upload videos that try to capture what his stream is saying, and then there's actually a bunch of imitators on YouTube that straight up just like steal the builds and copy it note for note, and you'll be able to find those probably as well. Either way, the result should be the same, but just in whole, in terms of maximizing efficiency in softcore trade, Ritu is actually unmatched. On the hardcore trade side of things, Dan is sort of the godfather. Other than saying that every decision made is the best, as is the case with the other two, it's really hard for me to capture what I think about Dan's builds that make it sort of unique. So if my builds are about finding like a new broken interaction that is so powerful that the resulting build, no matter what I do with it, cannot be weak, Dan instead probably tends to pick an interaction that's already quite efficient but not broken, but then optimize it so perfectly that every single decision is making a build that's already quite strong into something that's incredibly, incredibly efficient and powerful. When you think about builds in PoE, you realize that it's made up of thousands, literally, of small decisions. And usually when I open up someone's path of building link, there's literally hundreds of things that I can change in terms of making small efficiencies. I say most, I mean, I think as far as like the top 100 build makers even, there's actually very few things you'd want to change. But there's a lot of people who make builds. Anyways, when you open up Dan's builds, they're consistently really close to flawless. And unlike a lot of people that are really focused on numbers like me, he's oftentimes really optimizing for what the game has to offer against you and wants to have a setup that's relatively not cringe to play. He's not gonna press like 18 buttons to make something work generally. For example, even when we both had cold dot sign league starters, we both played it as a tri curse because that's the way you set up as a cold dot sign. But instead of just casting all three curses, he opted for Bane which I think was actually much better in a lot of scenarios outside of your single target. If you like building in PoE, period, you should be stalking this guy's profile every league, and also subscribe to his YouTube where he uploads a video like once every six months of raw gameplay, not much to it, but it's definitely a worthwhile task to stalk this guy down. I think the crazy thing is that a lot of the tech that he develops over time is sustainable over a lot of leagues, not really specific to like one skill interacting with another skill. Like I think the one that comes to mind for me often is a sort of tri jewel setup in Scion Start, where he puts a natural instinct and militant faith in the Scion Start, is able to hit 150 of devotion because of that combination, but also on one of the small notables, he'll go for a thing called Cloistered on a special notable, which makes it so you're immune to consecrated ground. And because you're a Scion, your attributes are generally really easy to balance, and he pairs that with Rational Doctrine for permanent consecrated ground. I saw that and my mind was absolutely blown away. That's not even one of the more complicated builds or interactions that he's setting up. If you actually go and delve through things, you'll learn a lot. But I think the biggest mistake that a lot of people do is they rush through looking at the POVs and miss a lot of the little details that make each build really great. Last person on this list shouldn't come as any surprise if you actually pay attention to things. It's Ben. And I guess it's no surprise that if you're one of the best players in a game like this, you're also one of the best build makers. Before I continue here, there's a bit of a weird tension. On one hand, you'll generally not be able to execute the same build, the same level of performance. But also if you look at each build, they're beautifully optimized, usually with specific goals in mind, whether that's racing, whether that's making a really nice end game blasting build. But especially in SSF settings, I think he's the single best resource to look at. And this is greatly enabled by someone that isn't him, but rather his new YouTube editor. No idea who that guy is, but he is able to compile some really illustrative and succinct compilations of how Ben constructs an endgame build, goes through the crafting process, oftentimes includes contextual notes about what he's thinking about each item, 
the steps that he's taking, failures, successes, measures of crafting and assembly. And I find myself rewatching a lot of that stuff just to remind myself what some of the best practices for crafting are without having to like rejog my memory too much. People often complain about this guy, Ben, being a bit of a meta follower, but the truth is they have it all twisted, right? He's the meta setter. Now, I personally refuse to play any of his builds usually because I'm a bit of a hater, but that's not really that important. As a player though, if you want to have the best SSF learning experience, this is the guy to go to. Whenever he actually does play HD trades, some of the stuff he assembles is crazy. I mean, for instance, when me, him, and I'm Exile, and Quantrick are magic finding, he actually fully set up my build. I think he might have set up most of Nick's. But one day I looked inside the guild stash, and every single piece of gear, every single skill jump had been socketed in to where it should be. All I did was just like put the gear on, and it had been perfectly assembled for attributes, res, overcap, optimized for magic find. It was unbelievable. I mean, there's a reason people sort of consider him the Michael Jordan of ARPGs. Or maybe that's someone else, I don't know. So anyway, even though I think this list is pretty indisputable, I'm also sort of curious what other people think in terms of who the best overall build makers are in PoE. Obviously, there's a lot of things you could look at, and like, there's a bunch of different ways you could, you know, pull from different metrics, but I think from a very frenetic sense of, you know, just capturing using general conventional wisdom of what you might look at, things like efficiency, things like creativity, things like consistency in terms of really great builds. I think this list is really the cream of the crop. But if you have other people that you think are really up there, let me know. I'm curious. I mean, who knows?